Minnesota State Mankato centrifugal chillers are housed in a room at the rear of the utility plant. A large garage door allowed for the installation of the chillers and their respective pumps and piping. Minnesota State University of Mankato has three centrifugal chillers. The chiller shown here is the 1,000 ton train centrifugal chiller. To the right is the 1,200 ton train centrifugal chiller. Both train chillers use R123, also called HCFC123, as refrigerant. This is considered a low pressure refrigerant because within the evaporator it operates at a negative gauge pressure. Positioned behind the train chillers is the 1,000 ton McQuay centrifugal chiller. The McQuay chiller uses R134A as refrigerant. This refrigerant always operates at a positive gauge pressure. As can be seen, each chiller is quite large, for these chillers provide chilled wire to be used in air conditioning applications across the entire campus. The 1,000 ton train chiller is the first to be turned on. When this chiller reaches maximum capacity, the 1,200 ton train chiller is turned on, and then the 1,000 ton McQuay chiller. The large black cylindrical section is the evaporator. The tan cylindrical section is the condenser, and above the evaporator is the dual stage compressor, meaning that it compresses the refrigerant twice to reach the operating pressure within the condenser. The blue pipes are for the chilled water return and supply. In the evaporator, water returning from campus is cooled by the internal refrigerant. The refrigerant, which is now a vapor, passes through the compressor. In the condenser, heat is removed from the refrigerant and given to the condensate water. The condensate water is then pumped to the cooling tower where heat is expelled to the atmosphere. The refrigerant is now a liquid. The green pipes are for the condensate water return and supply. An economizer is connected between the evaporator and the condenser. Between each component is a throttling device. Due to the drop in pressure through the throttling device, some of the refrigerant becomes vapor. This vapor is then diverted to the second stage of the compressor as can be seen by the connecting pipe. By doing this, the power required by the compressor is reduced.